when I'm talking to a prisoner, he's talking about his, you know, his life and that, he gets all upset, emotional. He would start cutting himself in front of me. He smoked some, some spice here, but it wasn't spice. It was black mamba. They call okay, it black yeah, mamba. Yeah, so oh. it was ra basically rat poison. So he smoked rat poison and out of nowhere, it starts slicing his, his, his whole body, his neck. One time he, he ripped his, um, his bicep muscle and he put his, uh, his hand through it and he was writing on the wall uh, in blood, give me food. And what, what, do you, what do you honestly think of the prison system in the UK? I understand it can be stressful for people who are managers and directors. You have to understand from their point of view, it's difficult because they're handling a whole prison, yeah. 1,600 inmates. I was there for one year. Obviously, I thought I'd be there for a long time, but obviously I got fired and, you know, they don't want me. In. You got fired. What's going on, guys? This video is sponsored by Fireway Pizza. Trust me, I told you I was going to bring you a wicked sponsor. Fireway Pizza. Use code BLUETICK for 20% off your order. What's going on, guys, and welcome back to the Blue Tick Show. Today, I've got one from the opposite side, a prison guard and a screw. Welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. Normally, I've got all the gangsters who are in prison. You're the one who keeps them in there. <laughs> yeah, of course. Um, I mean, not everyone's a gangster, you know. Everyone's just like, just normal people like me and you. How long was you in prison? I mean, working the in the prison. Yeah. Obviously, it's a new prison. Um... I was there for one year. Obviously, I thought I'd be there for a long time, but obviously I got fired and, you know, they don't want me anymore. You got fired? Yeah. <laughs> right. We'll jump into that story a little bit, but to start, what made you even want to get into a prison? Um, it's Most a new... people try and stay away. Of course, um, it's a new experience, new career. You know, I thought, you know, I'll chase that. I thought, you know, I'll give it a try. You know, there's nothing wrong in trying. What was your routine? Talk us through your routine a little routine, bit. Routine, obviously, get there in the morning, uh, seven o'clock. Unlock time was at eight o'clock. You know, make sure they go to work. Uh, prisoners go work. They, they do laundry, wing work. They actually go out outside. Uh, obviously, in the prison, there's other like industries. Um, they just work in there, like workshops such as crafting, or in the bike bicycle shop. They even like fix bikes. So it gives them even the gym. So they work out in the gym as well. Everyone like. says being a gym. What's the word? Gym. The gym guy, Jim Orderly. Jim Orderly, uh, nah. In 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 the prison I worked at HMP HMP Five Wells, the the best job was waste management. Yeah, they were getting paid like a bill a week. Like pr prison, yeah, it's big money for them. Like typically, a, a, a prisoner earns around what five pound a week if he's not working. Then he's wow. got other expenses to pay, like fifty p for like a TV license. It's, it's jokes how much what, they charge for TV license in prison. Yeah. I swear to they, God. Yeah, they charge you for like anything, man. Like you have and what to was your prison like? Obviously, a different cats, right? Yeah. So this one was a category C. Okay. Is that so? What kind of prisoners did you have inside? Sex offenders. Everyone really. So sex offenders, um, murderers, lifers. Oh, okay. So it was proper. drug dealers. So yeah, it was alright. But when you when you go in and work, you wouldn't know who's a sex offender, who's yeah. a who's a drug dealer. You wouldn't know unless you work in their wing. Obviously, me personally, I've worked with like uh, prisoners in the drug dealers wing and the murder wing but I mainly was in the sex offenders wing so you know I don't say the word but paedophiles yeah, yeah. Um, I've worked with them um, the maddest stories I heard from them is just like and you honestly, don't want to work there as men we all know we, that's one thing we hate paedophiles nonces paedophiles yeah, we, of course, don't, we don't fuck with them we don't fuck with no nonces mate that's what it is <laughs> how did you work with them didn't you just want to smash their heads in like every yeah, end single of the day, day I'm being honest that's the truth no, like, no, no, I get where you're coming from but end of the day when you apply for the role, you know what you're getting you, into. You know what you're getting into, and you have to be professional because it's a professional work work workplace. So you can't be judgmental. You have to be respectful, regardless. Like you have to show that that you're respectful. Because at the end of the day, when inmates see you as respectful, they'll show you respect because it works both ways. Yeah, you have to respect an, uh, one another. That's how it is. And obviously, me working in the in the prison, I enjoyed it because I uh, I gained respect, not just. <laughs> sex offenders yeah. like obviously I have to treat them the same as everyone else even though you might not want to you're gonna have to innit? you're gonna keep that professionalism and you knew who was who would they tell you well we we have a um, system where we can actually read their files oh really yeah you can literally they have their like stories and it's, it's mad like the maddest stories I heard about sex offenders it's, it's nasty man and when you're in there and you're around the murder and stuff did you ever get scared no, nah, not at all. They're never, like, ever, nah. ever felt nothing at all. Because you have to understand, yeah, that they're in there for for what they've done, in it, and obviously they regret it. The hundred percent. Not all of them do. Like I've had some people on here as well who just say, "Listen, I don't give a shit. I've done it. What? 
Of course, that's just a minority, though, isn't it? I don't know. I've ne- I've never I've never been prison. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but I feel like some people, most of the people who go prison, they go for a stage. The first, I don't know, I'd say like year. Everyone is, I'm innocent. I didn't do it. And then they kind of start coming out thinking, if you're doing a long bird, you think, all right, cool, yeah, I did do it. I got a- yeah, of course. They come out of it because obviously the mental health start to kick in, isn't it? Yeah. Obviously, they're, they're being banged up most of the days and maybe a few years, depending on their, uh, the crime. And obviously, mental health is number one big issue in the prison. Obviously, when I'm talking to a prisoner, it's talking about his, you know, his life and that he gets all upset, emotional. He will start cutting himself in front of me. Like I've been what, in that situation. You've got to stop it, right? Yeah, of course. We have to de-escalate the situation. But if he's cutting himself with a razor, he's crafted his own weapon. Some one prisoner, he he smoked some some spice here, but it wasn't spice. It was black mamba. They okay. call it black mamba. Yeah, yeah, so black mamba you know, he is basically rat poison. So he smoked rat poison. I don't know how how they do that shit yet, but they're, they're smoking rat poison, and he, he turned into a crackhead. And out of nowhere, starts slicing his his whole body his neck one time he ri- ripped his um his bicep muscle and he put his uh, his hand through it and he was writing on the wall uh, in blood give me food oh, yeah, yeah, yeah it's crazy what? literally he was doing oh, it in front disgusting. of me disgusting he was trying to rip off his bicep and what are you doing just sitting there chilling looking at him it wasn't just me it was just several other officers as well next to me what he's putting his hand in yeah. his bicep yeah I was literally there bro because he turned into a kraken and yeah, he that's disgusting uh, he proper like couldn't sleep for two weeks he stayed awake telling the same story to every officer about his life story for two weeks straight he didn't sleep he was naked we had to put him into a seg so a seg is like a segregation unit where they just say stay banged up for 24 hours a day don't come out it was that bad mate well listen to be fair i think like when you're in that state you kind of need that yeah, a hundred percent, man. That's not normal. That's, Obviously, that's... he got shipped out of the prison. He got sectioned. Obviously, for them type of prisoners, they have to go to a special hospital yeah. for prisoners. So, and what what do you what do you honestly think of the prison system in the UK? I think, truthfully, at the minute, truthfully obviously, I haven't worked in any other prison, so I can't really say what's the. But from what you have seen, what do you what do you? Believe? I think it's bad. To be Why? honest, what would you change if you was in control? If I, 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 I couldn't tell you, because obviously. I understand it can be stressful for people who are managers and directors. You have to understand from their point of view, it's it's difficult because they're handling a whole prison, yeah. 1,600 inmates. So, But I'll say it's, it's still bad because they keep changing policies, keep changing rules. When I worked there, unlock time was 8 o'clock in the morning, you get banged up at 7. Then it got changed at 6. Then it get changed at 5. Then it's banged up the whole day. Like, why they keep changing rules? It's, it's just mad. Like, so, what would you change if you was in control? What would you change? What would I change? Hmm. Sex offenders get banged up twenty four hours a day. All the other pe- all the other prisoners, just normal, isn't it? How what time? Eight, eight to eight to five. Eight to five, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and but do you not reckon? Like, listen, fair enough. Sex offenders have done wrong. I'm not defending sex offenders at all. But locking them up. Do you even think that's a punishment for them? Because I believe they're all unwell. I believe they're actually like... They're, they're mentally... Yeah. Mentally fucked. Man, I'm and locking them up, like we was, I was talking to a guest yesterday and an incident occurred like that. And she was like, yeah, he was locked up, but he was just sitting there smiling. Like he didn't care. There's no like remorse they're, in that person's of eyes. Of course, the, the majority of them don't have remorse. They, they like it. They like that sort of stuff. Yeah, it's fucked. Uh, the maddest story is they're messaging little girls on Facebook. That Like you, you read their case and it's nasty. One of them had a, a relationship with his own daughter. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. The yeah. guy was like 38. He was a Muslim as well. Like, he, he re- reverted as well. But he's still done that. But how do you genuinely stay professional? Because after reading that, your blood must have been boiling. Of course. Like, when I first started working with them, of course my blood was boiling. But I don't want to lose my job, in it. That's my main income. But you did lose your job. But I lost my job, yeah. That, yeah after Talk us through what happened. <laughs> So I went on an escort with a prisoner and it was, a, it was a night shift. So it was outside the prison, obviously. And I didn't know. Obviously, I thought, you know what? We'll take our phone in, use a Snapchat. To Was you allowed it or no? No, not at all. Not on duty. Okay. So, but I thought, you know what? I'm not going to get caught. They won't know. You know, I'm, I'm just going to, you know, waste some time. You know, it's, it's, it's a 12 hour shift, isn't it? You know, what am I going to do? Just sit there, watch the prisoner sleep. Yeah. Like... I don't know how the prison got my video. I don't know if someone snitched. Maybe. 
but obviously you have to understand prison they have some sort of technology even the police they have some sort of spyware where they can access your phone your social media do you reckon of course they found me like I changed my name on Facebook and that several times and they still find me I don't know you know a lot of people talk about this and say that police can do this police can do that. I, I don't actually think they can if they, do once, they have, mu- once they have your name that's it yes. you got nowhere to run man they have a device they have some sort of device called PNC can't remember it's an acronym for something but I can't remember it's a technology they use to like find out who you are it'll have your fingerprints everything yeah but that's standard fingerprints and stuff yeah. but to get into my social media they'll find you man even pr- even prisons find like officers you yeah, have to understand I, they have their phone with them yeah true of course they'll have phone with them how many people how many prisoners do you reckon in, what's the percentage of people who have phones in prison percentage I'll say I'll say half of them for real that many for real that many the amount of throwovers I've witnessed as well and how now, do they get it all in obviously you have to understand corruption is number one thing in the prison obviously, talk yeah. us through it a little bit because obviously you've experienced it the, there's different types of corruption so obviously officers bringing in contrabands and and how off- much would an officer get paid obviously you must know yeah of course I've been offered like, obviously I'm not going to bring shit in because obviously I'm not that type of person People might hate me because obviously I understand money's the money, money's good. They're offering of good money. What well, one brother, yeah, is Bengali like me, yeah. He offered me ten G's a month, ten fifteen G's a month to bring shit in. That much? Yeah. Yeah, hard to be loading that straight up, bringing it through, mate. Fifteen grand a month. Let's go. Send it. It's good money, but if you get <laughs> if you get caught, yeah, that's done. it. You're, yeah, you're done. done. You're finished. Your life is over. You can get up to ten years in prison for bringing shit in. Well, uh, obviously, I saw a TikTok video with this one officer. I'm not going to say no names. This prisoner was recording him and and stating, this man is bringing me phones. Oh, the the video's been taken down, so you can't find it. He filmed him doing he it. He filmed him doing it. So he's done. He's still there. <laughs> he didn't get caught. Well, even with the video being out? The video went off, so technically there's no evidence. It's mad. It's crazy. 15 grand a month he offered you? He offered where, me, yeah. So, so where's he getting that? Where's he getting that money from? Obviously selling inside. Obviously from his from his boys. Obviously selling inside, and obviously from his boys from the outside. And what's what's the going price of stuff inside? So, this is what I heard anyway yeah, from other inmates. An A four piece of like sheet of spice is like three four bills. And what would it be on the roads? On the road, fuck all. Oh, for real? Yeah. Like nothing, literally. Nothing. It's cr- it's crazy. It's crazy. Like. It's you know, so many people say there's so much more money in prison than out of prison. Of course, prisoners love going back into prison. Yeah. They, they, they reoffend. Only why? Because they love making money. They love making money in the inside. That's and how. That's, that's where the dog is. If you've got a link inside, you're good. And it's easy to corrupt officers, especially women as well. I'm not. I'm not saying every woman's the same, but they're more vulnerable when it comes to corruption. Do you reckon they do it because they're scared? Hundred percent. If the prisoner finds out who you are, this that. In more cases, it was the case. And then you're finished. Would they threaten families and stuff threaten like that? Threaten families, everything. Every, family, they know where you live. If you've got a murderer sat in front of you saying, bring me this in, otherwise I'm going to kill your daughter, for example. Potentially. You're going to bring it in. Potent- anything could happen. That's why you don't trust a prisoner. <laughs> What's some of the worst <laughs> stories you've experienced yourself? Me. In the first couple months, when I when I started working, um, there was this officer, a woman officer, and she got walked off, cuffed. Cause she she got caught, an inmate. Swear to swear God. down. <laughs> you know I've heard about this as well. I've heard about it. It does happen inside. It, it does happen inside, and that's that's a um, category of corruption. She probably get jail time as well, because of that. That's mad. It is mad. <laughs> but listen, the guys in there they're hungry. Yeah, of course. They're, they're, of course they they got no women. It happens no. in every prison, not just just not just the one I worked at. But don't the prisoners, don't the prison think, you know what, maybe it's best we don't hire women? That's what it is. Because it's a men prison, they don't understand that. Like, you need to hire more officers, big officers as well. Because regardless, even, these are big, if, big, even if the girl's like two out of ten. Yeah. If you've not seen a girl in five years, <laughs> she's going to be ten out of ten. Yeah, 100%, it's, man. It's, it's just <laughs> how the body works. Of course. But I think it's mad, man. The amount of corruption that does go in prison. And to be fair, I've never had a prison guard in the on a podcast. Never, your first I mean, one. It's important to have these officers coming. It's good to educate people on that, because um, I'm not gonna state which social media platform it, this came from. But I watched this video of this officer. He spoke about 
his his life in prison, like working there, and how he got jail time. So for what? For bringing shit in, Zan- little Zanko phones, drugs. Do you lot not get searched when you walk in? Of course we get searched, but it's easy to bring shit in, man. It, like, okay, a Zanko phone is like this this big. Yeah. A guy can just put it up his behind, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, but so if he wants to bring in drugs, obviously they have, they have sniffer dogs. Yeah, but, but so they search all the guards as well. Not every day. It's like random. Okay. So you can get away with it. If you get caught, tough shit, man. You got caught, you get caught. You get you get fired, then but you then get... But then don't people let you know? If, like, if let's say you're bringing it in, you might start a different shift, you might come a little bit late, someone will phone you and be like, listen, they got the dogs in today, or no? The dog will wait. If you're running late, they'll, they'll, still, they'll, they'll still search you. So how are you bringing it in? Because they're bringing in... The, listen, prisons are full up of drugs, everything. Yeah, like when I walk in the landing, it just smells of cannabis. All the time, you don't know where it's coming from. Like it's it's a huge landing. Like is it coming from the right side? Is it coming? From the, it's all around you. Yeah, that's and the thing is they don't the pl- prison officers don't actually care about that. To be fair, do they? You know, you know what it is. They just want to get the job done. That's it. And go home. You see any dramas while you was in there? Yeah, fights. There's one time I kitted up as well. You oh, know, for real? yeah, moving prisoners from one cell to the other because they don't want to move because they're so used to their landing and they're, and they're comfortable where they are. And why do you move them? Because a majority of the time they, they get moved to an induction wing. It's when they're new in the prison. Yeah. So they have spaces for... They, they move them around eventually, depending on their category and their um, risk levels. So if you're high risk, you, you go to your high risk wing. That's Someone told me as well, depending on where you are in the prison, whether you're higher or lower, that makes a difference. What's that about? So I think you're talking about different levels of enhancements. So you've got basic... Enhance and super enhance. So and when you talk us through that. What so, that? if you on basic, you're pretty much banged up all day, like depending on your behavior. And like if you if you've got negative beha- behavior, you go on basic. You get your TV stripped off of you. You get no money, nothing. You literally like. What do you start on? Basic. You start on basic. Yeah, it's basically okay. induction, isn't it? So you do some like um, paperwork, compacts, yeah. you know, contract for them to sign, and they stay in basic for a couple of weeks. Then they get move to standard which is enhanced which is normal and what's that it's like just normal bang up so eight till five or eight till seven and at enhanced? that time enhanced super enhanced is that they, they stay a bit longer if that makes sense so you get unlocked the same but they get banged up a bit late like nine o'clock and they get anything else extra money throughout the week um more privileges like like you normally during lunchtime you get locked up for an hour so officers can go for their lunch mm-hmm but for these guys, they can stay out. It's 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 crazy, like they're all And do you reckon there's people in there who shouldn't be in super enhanced, but just obviously some of the prison guards? Who decides that? The prison guards. The managers. So the prison guards, we're just in the front line. We're just following orders. At the end of the day, it's, it's the it's the managers. That, the managers that, corrupted as well. There can be a few. It's hard to tell, isn't it? Because the managers, they've got the power, in it, so they can do whatever they want. Yeah, true. They can uh, there's true. there's one rapper I saw in. Um, in, in the jail I worked at is Asko you saw him yeah yeah <laughs> what was he like inside yeah it's alright he got he got super enhanced straight away for real yeah why Not, maybe his name I don't know maybe because of his behaviour his behaviour's been good maybe he's coming out next year what he was straight away super enhanced yeah <laughs> so in, in jail yeah, in, mo- in most jails um, some prisons they get given a band a band like a like a coloured band yeah so that indicates they're allowed to freely move around the prison wherever they want and why would they get that for work purposes they work for the prison as well okay so most of them work for like mental health side of stuff so they talk to other prisoners like most of them don't want to work with the sex offenders yeah like when it comes to mental health like they don't have remorse for sex offenders but they have to do their job so you understand like they're, they're mixing sex offenders and Normal wing uh, prisoners. They do mix them. Yeah, they start to mix them. Normally, we segregate them. So when it comes to work in the morning, they do mass movements. What's that? So non, like, sex offenders, like normal prisoners. When yeah. I mean normal prisoners, I mean like murderers, drug dealers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They go to work. They they come out of the house blocks and they and they move to their work locations. But when it comes to sex offenders, we have to lock off the prison. No one's allowed to come out of their gates except these pri- uh, pedophiles. Because they, they, they know they're going to get like, punched up and stuff. Yeah, of course, 100%. You can't, you can't mix them. Or there's a fight happening. Someone's going to get killed, maybe. Have you seen anyone die in prison? 
Yeah, there was. I wasn't working at that time, but yeah, there's been an incident. It was during a night shift, and he died from an aneurysm. Yeah, he just woke up one. Apparently, he just woke up one day, pressed his cell button, and just banged on the door and said, "My head, my head," and just fell on the floor. Just died instantly. And the people that work there, they go to coroner's court. So you, you obviously know what coroner's yeah, court of is. Yeah, yeah, of course. Obviously, they, you, I've never been in the coroner's court before, but I heard it's it's, it's, it's shit, man. You don't want to be there because you've got because you've got your family there, innit? Yeah. And obviously, the family would blame you, even though you might yeah, not yeah, be in the even, wrong. Even if you're just a prison guard, whatever, you're still yeah. yeah even if you're not, if you, if you haven't done anything wrong, you're still under their um, well-being. So go on. Sorry, I interrupted you earlier. You was explaining why you got fired. Uh so I was on the escort with the, with the prisoner, weren't I? And basically, me having my phone with me got me fired. It was more to the story. Explain, yeah, explain, explain a bit more of it. Because I recorded my colleague in it, so we were just having a laugh in it. And I deleted the video, but somehow the workplace still got the video. Well, they showed you the video. They showed as well. me the video. <laughs> and did you ask the other person involved if they shown anyone anything like that? Nothing. I posted it on my story, but I deleted it straight away. Yeah, story. so it was it, it was my fault. But how did they retrieve the video when I deleted it? Like, it's just mad. You got snitches on your story. Probably. I deleted everyone from. I deleted all the people I that delete I deleted the whole Snapchat. Nah, yeah. not the whole Snapchat. The people that worked with me, I deleted them. Okay. And what, listen, what is the worst things you've seen in prison? Just self-harming, man. Is it that bad inside? Bad. They'll, they'll self-harm for over anything. If you don't, if you take the TV away, I'm going to self-harm. And do you have to give it back? Nah. If they get stripped from their privileges, you go, it is what it is. That's how prison so system works. So what happens work. if they're self-harming? What, what, what do you, what's the procedure? So the what procedure happens? is, so we have to open a healthcare plan and uh, we call it an act. So it's like an observation log, where we observe them every hour, depending on the severity of the on the of the harm. So if it's a proper deep cut, depending like four times an hour. There's one time I was on a night shift, and there was like twenty people. No, I wouldn't say twenty. I said fifteen people on this observation log, and you have to check on them every every hour, multiple times. So you can't be you basically not sitting down. And what what do you think prisons could do differently to actually help stop that? It's where you, you you can't stop it. It's gonna happen regardless. Obviously, prisoners they they self harm because they're not getting what they want, and they and they self harm like proper good man. Like I'm talking about deep cuts, like blood everywhere. You had one guy trying his bicep off. I don't yeah, think, yeah. I don't think you can get deeper than that. It's just mad, man. Isn't so it? when people do it, ain't they doing it to get a reaction out of the prison office? Ain't of they course. doing it to get their TV back or stuff like that? And of you course, don't, 100%. you don't give it. That's yeah. the rule. You can't give it. You can't give it, depending if they're negative behaviour and they're on basic. That's how we strip what it. What if he's going mad, s- s- cutting himself, you don't give it back? But how do you stop him? He just has to cool down himself, innit? That's how the prison system works, man. Like, yeah, it's, it's crazy. crazy. If, you, if you give in to him and give it to him as well, then everyone's going to self-harm. But end of, end of the day, you got to you got to show authority. You have to show that power, innit? You can't, you can't, you can't have the prisoner have that power. Or, or else you're just going to look like a pussy. Was there any big dogs in there who no of one course, fucked with? You know what? The, the the big guys in there, yeah, they're the, the most respectful guys I've met. They love their gym and everything. They're proper respectful. I never had any sort of issue with big guys in there. No, I'm not as in physically big. I mean any big, big naughty boys who no one, no one fucked with. Of course. 100%. Was even the guards a little bit wary with him? They're careful around him. Careful what they say. Obviously, end of the day, they didn't have it. I didn't see any like Incidents like that. It's mainly, you know, like people that who are short and that bad. It's them type of ones. They're, they're feisty ones. Yeah, headaches. They're headaches, man. Any prison riots, anything like that? Uh, not when I was there. Um, th- there's been cases where there have been dirty protests. Yeah, that's Because of bang up in it. Yeah, shit everywhere. Have you ever it, experienced that? S- smelt it, yeah. What, while you I've, were I've, there? Yeah. yeah there's there's one officer who got potted. What's potted? So potted is um, where a prisoner shits on a bowl for a couple of days and he just throws that at the officer he d- dislikes. I'd quit work. I swear that I'm never coming back. I could never <laughs> show me. I could never in my life show my face again after Giza threw shit on me. And you, obviously the sugar and hot water. Yeah. Um, uh, an incident like that didn't happen, but it, it would have happened in, anyway. Because uh, at the time the prison wasn't that full. It's full now. It's like 1,600 inmates. What was it at your point? I think it was like 1,200. 
Okay, so it's not as not as popular. big, yeah. Because I've heard a lot of stories about that sugar and salt, uh, sugar course. and hot water. Because it gets stuck to your skin, in there, you, your skin gets ripped off. Yeah, I heard, but people have seen people's faces just melt off. Yeah, of course, hundred percent. You see stories like that all the time, even in the movies. Guys, have you been thinking of move to Dubai? I've partnered up with Cranbrook Legal to make your experience so much easier. Literally, I got the main man from Cranbrook Legal right now to tell you how easy it is. Guys, it's as simple as picking up the phone, giving us a call and letting us get on with the business. What, literally? One phone call? Literally one phone call, a few documents and we're there. And then I just get up, fly to Dubai and I ain't got to pay tax no more. Yeah, but you can come and see us. We'll take you out for a meal, show you Dubai and then it's all up to you after that. Bro, where do I sign now? And I've always said, like, obviously, I've had loads of loads of criminal guests on here. I've had probably over 50 crim- ex-criminal guests. And every single one of them say prison is just full of other criminals and we just go in and network. How can they change it? Because at the end of the day, you just got loads of criminals in there all together, putting their ideas together, coming out, working together, being more and more dangerous. And then if they're inside, they're inside. They don't care. Half these people don't care about going to prison. Because yeah, money to be to be made, like, like I said, and you know when you're in prison, they they they, they become smart. They be, they come up with these innovative ideas. You know, they talk to other inmates, how they work, they work together, they make more money. How can they make more money? I don't know. I don't know what's in their plan. You don't know. You just don't know who they are, like who they're talking to in the outside as well. Yeah, there's, there's the thing is, there's so much money. Yeah, and so much. You don't know what they've done either. So you got to be, every time you go and approach someone, you got to be a little bit wary because you don't know what that person's done. Sometimes they're, they're open about it. Oh, really? Yeah, what well, one inmate, humble guy, proper respectful. He's in his, like, 40s or 50s. I proper got along with him. And, and I just chat, walk around with him. And one time he was like, yeah, I'm in jail for, like, 26 years. I was like, why? What for? I was like, bringing crack, crack cocaine in the, in the UK. I made, like, 200 mil. Yeah, straight down. He made that much money. I'm not even gonna chat. She's like you see on the internet. If I remember his name, man, um, it's, it's just mad. Twenty six years. Twenty six years in jail. It's a long, bird, it's a long man. time, man. These man, they're the long, the long time in jail. They know what they're doing. Do you think twenty six years is really gonna change a person, or do you think it's too much? You have to understand that what they got to live for. They're just behind That's bars, isn't it? Some of them do change, especially the Muslim. Like they always give dawah. Uh, that's a good thing to see. Like a lot, a lot of I see a revert every like few weeks. Really, taking the shahada. Yeah, I've yeah. heard a lot of people revert to Islam in prison to be safe. Yeah, in most cases, yeah, to get to get protection. Yeah, because in in prison you can't, no one can touch them. No one can touch them because obviously Muslim Brotherhood they all stick together. Yeah. But end of the day, you you'll know who's a who's a true Muslim and who's not. How can and you who's know that? practicing? Yeah, but if, how, if, how can you ever really know that? A, tr- a true Muslim who takes the Shahada, he'll know the Shahada, f- and he kn- and he know the you know the first surah. Th- he'll just know it. He'll, he'll just know. Yeah, he just if he's a true Muslim, what's he in prison for? Obviously, for his past, you know, incident. And yeah, like what, you you mean a revert? Conviction. Yeah, revert. Okay, fair enough. But I think Muslims in prison. Listen, I respect anyone who becomes Muslim. Yeah, I'm yeah, not sitting there judging anyone. I don't. I respect all of them, whether they're in prison, out of prison, wherever they are. But I don't respect the ones who go and do it for protection. 100% I agree with you. Because I've had a I've had a few stories myself where people have gone, they've tried to, they've become Muslim as protection and then they've fallen in love with the religion. Which is fine. I respect that. But don't just do it to go and get protection. Yeah, of course, that's not right. Do it because you, you love the religion. You Or even do it just because you want to find out more about it or you want to learn more about it. Don't just go and do it because you're thinking... Yeah, you know, it's a bit techy in here. <laughs> you know, <laughs> nah, I, need, I need to become Muslim. I need to go, like, Friday prayers and stuff. You can't just do that. That's nah, not so, a life run. Yeah, some of them are genuine about it. Nah, they always yeah. ask me for advice. Uh, that's a good thing. Obviously, they come up to me. Uh, obviously, I try to get the imam around. The imam is humble. Obviously, everyone respects the imam. Everyone respects the chaplain. Whether you're a priest, imam, doesn't matter. They'll respect you. They 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 have more protection than officers. Of course, they're not touching them. What's the what's Friday prayers like in in prison? It's good, man. I'm I'm, I'm praying next to inmates as well. And that's good, like all on best behavior in there. Yeah, of course. Obviously, they're praying to Allah in it. You can, but you never obviously, know there's obviously officers watching, but you don't need you don't need them if there's officers praying with them. Yeah, there's a, no there's a few Muslim officers as well, so it's good to pray with the brothers. Like 
Get your handshake Then you just treat them like normal When I'm in there It doesn't feel like a prison Because everyone's just You know Just free mixing And it's good But in most cases You do see some drugs Getting passed What in During Jumat Swear yeah, Of course man Yeah but that's mad It is mad But you have to understand Some of them don't care innit yeah, But you've got to care man Of like, course yeah, Listen I, uh, At the end of the day yeah, I, I respect people who come out And change their life I do I respect it Like you go to prison It's your second chance But most of the time They're going back And I think it's because Of the prison system 100%. I think The prison system's finished it don't make sense. Putting someone in prison for 20 years, he's coming out to a world he don't know no more. The only thing he knows is crime. Mm, you need true. to bring him out a little bit like, not soon obviously, because I'm saying, if you're a murderer, fair enough, you deserve 25 years, but what is 25 years to a murderer? You've taken someone's life. In my eyes, if you take someone's, yours should be taken. 100%. That's how I see it. <coughs> but the matter thing is, most of the sex offenders... they get like a couple years, man. Bro, I, 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 don't, I don't fuck I, with I, I don't it. understand I don't, I don't that. Even, drug, I, drug dealers get more. I don't actually That's what I don't get Drug dealers They're, they're making money man I get what they're doing Is wrong uh, a- Any crime is wrong But sex offenders Getting less years Than a drug dealer Doesn't make sense man The prison system is yeah, But not to be um, What's the word Controversial now But We all know why Sex offenders get less Because half the people In government Are all sex offenders And they want to try And keep the sentence In low for that 100% And I think Yeah that's going to Fuck shit up now I've just said that On the podcast Oh well um, <laughs> It's true though It is It is true and I think it's wrong. Listen, you're a drug dealer. Fair enough, yeah? You're ruining people's lives. But you think raping a 11-year-old kid isn't going to ruin the rest of their life? Not even 11, bro. I know, I know, but... Even three-year-olds. Yeah, that's, that's, that's not well. I know, I, know, I know this is not what people want to hear. I know it's, it's nasty, but I've read it. Three-year-old, man. That, that kid's life is not even, not even a girl. It's, it's a boy as well. Could be boys. Bro, I, I don't know how you, you've got a very, very good professional side to you because I'd lose my head. Of course, man. You, what they said about prison, if, if it's not for you, it's not for you. What was training like? Bro, it's boring, man. Just sitting there, just watching presentations, writing shit down. You have to do like a little exam as well at the end. And your first day in prison? It just, Bro, what it is, yeah, I think training's just bullshit, man. Obviously, just learn what's prison like, but you learn on the job. That's how I did it. I yeah, what was it like? The first day you went in there, what was it really like? Obviously, the, 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 the inmates, they like fresh meat. Oh, <laughs> that's for real? A, yeah, they say, they're, oh, fresh meat, fresh meat. They'll try, they'll try and like question you, you. And that. Yeah, they'll try to test you. That's number one thing. You've got to be careful what you say because they'll test you in anything, man. They're going to make sure if you're one of them officers, like easily to corrupt or are you strong minded. So you've got to be ready. Like what? What would they say to you? Bringing shit in. Would you bring shit in for this amount of money? It's, it's just money, man. That's what it is. That's all they want, really. And on top of that, you've got to be careful. Like, you can't say where you're from and that. So, they used to be like, where you're from? Are you local? Nah, nah, I'm not local. I live in Bedford. <laughs> they used to say I live far away just so they don't find me. But they all know you're chatting shit. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> of course. But it's better that than, than anything else. You want to obviously try and protect your family and stuff. 100%. 100%, man. But I think, and I, I, I genuinely believe that prison system in, this, in, in the world needs to change. Because... It don't make sense. And having laws that are written on a book and telling you that if you do murder, you get 25. If you do rape, you get this. It, I think every single case needs to be assessed and looked at as an individual case. That is happening now because the, the whole prison is getting full now. They yeah. don't have the running out space. So they're trying to reevaluate people's sentence. I heard they're only allowed to spend a certain amount of week. £50 a week. That's all they're allowed to spend? Yeah. But to be fair, you don't need more than fifty pound a week. It's prison, isn't it? Then, I mean, they only pay for the TV license. That's it. Fifty p. Fifty p a week. I you get free, it's free rent, man. You know, you've got no bills to pay. Electric's free, free gas is free, gym is free. It's good life, isn't it? Yeah, the the cells mad as well. Like they got their own shower. Every cell got their own shower, toilet. What, what kind of prison are you working in, bro? If you read it online, man. It's a five star hotel in there. <laughs> What's what, they got their own shower in there? Got their own shower, toilets, everything. If they if they want to spend money on a TV, they can get their own thirty two inch TV. They can get rid of the whole ten inch, twelve inch TV. But that's not prison, bro. I'm telling you right now, yeah. You're not in prison. You're you, working. You're working <laughs> like like Holiday Inn or something. <laughs> Trust me, man. They what? live in better. Bro, most of their cells is better than my room, my own room at home. So they, in they got, their room, they got shower. They got shower, everything. 
Xbox, PlayStation, they're chilling in there, man. They got they oh even they even got their own tablets, so they can listen to music. Obviously, it's a prison tablet, so they can't have access to internet or Google, but they have like a things to read like Wikipedia and that. It's mad, bro. I'm what? telling you right now, this what? Joe is a five star Premier Inn hotel, man. So in their cell, they've got shower. Yeah. So no beef in the shower rooms. You'll you'll see it on YouTube as well. If you write right right up the Joe and. YouTube. Let me, let me have a little quick Have a look here. Yeah. Uh, a picture of this gaff. Yeah, I'm not even chatting, bro. <laughs> it's mad. You'll see it on YouTube. There's, there's a video on YouTube, so. Like that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what it is. Even, like, you know, most jails, yeah. But they've got have... windows. Yeah, but the windows are, like, proper hard. You can't break it. I tried. Yeah, I, but... I punched it several times. Why? Proper hard. Just to test it. What do you mean you punched the windows just to <laughs> test it? What's wrong with you? Just sat in the room <laughs> punching up a window? Yeah. <laughs> you know, most jails, yeah, they have. I share, like some prisons they share a cell like most of prisons they 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 share a double yeah like two prisons in a cell so they have bunk beds in this jail they don't have bunk beds the room's massive it's like the size of this studio yeah so they have one separate bed beds. yeah separate beds yeah but obviously they share the shower and that and that but that's still, light that's light yeah I know there's chilling in there and how can you get obviously that that's for any kind of prisoner yeah so you're a murderer you can go there so everyone wants to go Dep- to- depending on Basically, the first when the jail first open, they choose the first I think two three hundred prisoners. Then after that, any other prison they just choose who who they want to like get out. So if you go to that prison, or if you go to like Belmarsh, oh Belmarsh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, a lot of people come from Belmarsh as well. They Belmarsh, must feel Thamesside. like they might they must feel like they're fucking in like uh, Dubai or something. Yeah, they love it, man. But my, some of them don't like this jail. Really? Yeah, they like being in the old the old jail they come from. Cause why? Cause of, of the of the mates, the brethren, the the new people from the outside. They get comfortable in it. The viewers, if you're watching this right now, <laughs> oh, I can't even. Just go in, go in the comments and tell me what prison you think we're talking about. Yeah, we haven't mentioned it. Just tell us what prison you think we're talking about. Cause I just googled this prison. This looks like Holiday Inn in my eyes. Well, it's better than Holiday Inn, <laughs> bro. I'm telling you right now. You, Three meals. Can I book a room there? Can I go like stay for a night? <laughs> you know, you know when the first opened, yeah, the the new officers that they hired, they were allowed to stay in for, for the night. But it looks cool, bro. It's mad. They're living comfortable, man. I can't. I'm actually, I'm, I'm actually shocked. But why, why do you reckon that is that the new approach to prisons? I think that what they're trying to is trying to do is trying to make it a bit more homey. Yeah, but why would you? They have their own kitchen appliances. Yeah, but they all oh. that, no. Like frying pans, everything, frying. Like electric ones, yeah. So the like inmates here, like bro. When I when I was working in there, especially the Muslim brothers, they must have been whipping up in the kitchen. Bro, they offered me food. The food's banging, man. Can't lie. Oh, you got these man making food in kettles and stuff. These lot got frying pans. Well, of course, well, yeah, they got frying pans. They don't, they don't need to use the kettles. <laughs> but but that's not prison. Like when you think of prison, you you think of you if, know. If someone told me I got to do, all right, fair enough. I haven't got Wi-Fi be a bit pissed but if someone told me i got to go there or i got to go Belmarsh that looks like a holiday home well they're living comfortable man yeah but that's that's and they're cooking in the wing as well like it smells good man like mo- most cases it doesn't smell of spice it smells of mackerel curry in it <laughs> it's good man they offer you food man they're, like if you're respectful to them they're respectful to you that's how it works yeah but I think that's a completely different completely different environment to like a cat A prison but end of the day, it's respect. It doesn't matter if you work cat A, cat B, or cat C. If you show respect to prisoners, they will show you back. And if other inmates sees that, they'll they'll think, "Yo, this guy's a good screw." They'll show you respect. You ever have? Like, did you ever have any dramas yourself? In most cases, yeah. The most of them just want to fight. That's oh. what they, they generally want to fight. But they're obviously not going to fight because once a prisoner hits you in the face or hits you anyway, he gets extended jail time. Who so hits he, extended? The prisoner. Once he hits you, yeah. Okay. If he hits you, like I can't hit him. I can't hit him first. But if he hits you, you, you can, can do what you want. I'll scrap. Yeah, but do you know what I don't understand? Yeah, I'm not even being funny. If you're in that prison, and you've just and you know that you can go to the likes of Belmarsh, these other serious, serious, serious prisons. Yeah, serious prisons. I'd be on my best behaviour. You would. You don't. But with the with them jails, yeah. Uh, the managers, the higher big big guy. If you look at other jails, yeah, most of these guys officers are actually big. In what like Belmarsh? In Belmarsh, in, in these cat A cat yeah. B prisons. But 
in my prison, majority of the like, don't get me wrong, the the women officers they were good, man. Most of them were actually generally good because they can de-escalate situations better. Yeah. Because they can talk to you. you so know. do they have cameras in the rooms? Nah, they have cameras in the wing. But not in the rooms. Not in the rooms, nah. For obviously for privacy reasons yeah. and that, yeah. Because. Bro, that's that's actually shocked me for real. <laughs> yeah, that's good, man. That's not prison. But they're living good, man. That's what it is. Yeah, but you, you, you got nonces in there. Nonces living like, the same. Get man. out. I'll just say the prison system is just broke, man. They need to hire male officers because this is a male prison. Like women, like if they want to like use a force on a on a on a male prisoner, bro, they they're, they're losing. Yeah, bro, we've all I'm not saying they can't so, do the job. Some gay. No, uh, of course, yeah. but you have to understand masculinity, like. The male are more dominant when it comes yeah, to masculinity. Like you, you have to be honest there. Like, don't get me wrong, women can do their job, yeah. But if they're getting hit, you feel a bit bad, isn't it? Yeah, but sometimes women are better at diffusing a situation. Diffusing, yeah, because us men, yeah. if someone starts shouting at you, we're gonna start shouting back. Yeah, they feel intimidated. Yeah, yeah. But it's a male prison. I think they should hire male staff, innit? But you know, I, I, I agree and I disagree. Only reason being is because if I went to a nightclub, mm. I walk up to the door. And there's a man there, give, a, a bouncer, starts talking shit. There's more of a chance of me kicking off with him than if I go there and the lady goes, oh, I'm really sorry, you can't come in. In my, Do I, you know what I mean? I, I get where you're coming from, but most of these women staff here, they're, they're like 19, 20, they're young, man. Yeah, no, you can't be having that. No, exactly, no, no, can't no. be you having gotta that. Have like, you got to have like old mums in Bro, there. Bro, some of these female staff that have an intimate relationship with these prisoners, man. I mentioned about the whole sexual yeah, yeah, yeah. favours and that. There was one time I went walked into a lift, yeah, it was like a mirror, innit? I see handprints. <laughs> I was like, yeah, someone's deaf or fucking, man. <laughs> in the lift? In the lift. Well, one well, one girl got caught giving head, innit? <laughs> giving oral, man. Where? In the lift. Well, she got caught in the lift? Yeah. So the, 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 the lift door just that, opened that and the camera just facing that her, bro. prisoner was living that day <laughs> bro the inmates loved it but obviously you can't that's not that's not prison bro. it's not prison in it but the whole point of prison is to restrict your of course like, what's going on of course but bro prison I, ain't sounding too bad you know Poo. <laughs> have i got to make sure i go in that prison <laughs> yeah but most of most of the time i knew a new i knew guys in there like you can't work with them but i just knew them and then like, they knew you from the outside you can't work with people who you knew from the outside Really? Yeah. And how 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 do you know? How do you tell them that? C- c- they tell you like you can't work with in this house block, in this block because of this guy. You know him, uh, but they don't care. They put you in there because they're running out of staff. They're always hiring staff, bro. Like, what's the pay like? Pay's alright. It's not bad. Like you can earn between like basic twenty seven bags a year. You can earn up to fifty if you put in the work. What more hours and stuff? Overtime is like forty, fifty pound an hour. Yeah, because they 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 like paying like double pay because of staff in it. Yeah. So they're running out of staff, so they're offering like forty, fifty pound an hour, bro. You miss your job? Of course. <laughs> Are you not allowed to work back in the prison now? Nah, I'm not sure because obviously it's on my it's on my record that I got fired. So I could maybe try again in a few years, but in most cases, nah. So I have to look for a new career in it. Well, listen, it has been a pleasure having you on the show. I appreciate it, man. And you're the first ever prison guard slash screw I've ever had on here. I've got one more coming on next week. So I think he was in Belmarsh. Okay. So we can compare the different sides of the stories as well. But listen, pleasure having you on. Look forward to seeing you again soon. Guys, if you enjoyed that episode, make sure you like, comment, subscribe, and we'll see you soon.